It all starts here in Marysville, Kansas, where Landall Corporation has been building traveling axle trailers since 1969 and has built over 27,000 trailers to date. Take a journey with us to see exactly how we do this and put out the best possible product we can for our customers. Landall trailer production starts in the engineering department. Pro-E modeling is used to design the entire trailer from the smallest piece part to the final assembly drawings that detail everything needed to produce the finished trailer. From there, the component parts are released to the manufacturing floor to be produced on state-of-the-art equipment. Webs and flanges exceeding 40 foot in length are cut with high-definition plasma out of top quality 80,000 and 100,000 yield steel produced in the USA. The beam parts are then shot blasted clean and formed to produce finished parts to match print specifications. The main beams, which are the backbone of the Landall trailer, are welded in one of several automated beam welding machines to produce high quality continuous welds for both aesthetics and structural integrity. Once the main beams have been produced, the inner beams are loaded into a Landall precision welding fixture that will clamp the beams to ensure straightness to within an eighth of an inch and will also consistently locate the roller pockets for proper undercarriage travel after final assembly. Once the beams have been clamped into place, the remaining components are inserted and welded into place to complete the tack-up of the trailer frame. The tacked-up frame is then moved to one of several final weld-up bays to have the outer beams and all the other remaining components welded into place to complete the trailer frame. The goosenecks, undercarriages, and tails for Landall trailers are produced with similar process as the main frame. Most of the subcomponents for these items are cut on high quality plate lasers and tube lasers using only top quality made in the USA steel. Precision tooling is used on CNC press brakes for any parts that require forming to ensure consistently produced parts. Landall precision welding fixtures are used to locate all of the components to produce a consistent product every time. Many of the weldments used to manufacture Landall trailers are produced on robotic welding stations utilizing some of Landall's 30 plus robotic welding arms. Roller pockets for the beams, undercarriage rails, gooseneck beams, undercarriage cross members, bumpers, ramps, and tails are just a few of the many items that are welded robotically using Landall precision fixtures. All robotic fixtures used to produce these parts are designed on Pro-E software by Landall engineers and built by Landall's world-class tooling staff. Landall trailer frames are then shot blasted again to remove all remaining rust, oils, and other contaminants. Depending on the options selected by the customer, the frame is then either sent out for hot dip galvanizing or is powder coated in Landall's state-of-the-art powder paint system. If the trailer is galvanized, the frame can be painted with high quality automotive finish to match the customer's specifications. Frames that are powder coated receive a base coat of zinc rich primer with a top coat of high quality TGIC polyester powder paint. Component parts for Landall trailers are powder coated on an automated paint line using the same top quality primer and top coat as the frames are painted with. After the frames and components are painted, Landall trailers are ready to be assembled. The undercarriage is the heart and soul of the Landall trailer and is a complex assembly that contains many component parts. Airlines and fittings, air tanks, grease lines, electrical harnesses, axles, ABS systems, bumpers and lights, and tires are some of the components that are installed on the undercarriage frame during this stage of the assembly. The trailer frame is put into an overhead assembly stand where assemblers install the electrical harnesses, hydraulic lines, airlines, hydraulic cylinders, and other components that are assembled to the underside of the trailer. Once the trailer frame and undercarriage have been through the first stage of assembly, the frame is then lifted out of the overhead assembly stand and is staged into the undercarriage assembly. Assemblers connect the hoses, harnesses, and cylinders on the undercarriage to the trailer frame. The winch, winch cable, work lights, decals, toolbox doors, and other components are then installed on the top side of the trailer. The trailer is now ready for final testing to ensure that all functions of the trailer operate properly. A light check system is used to verify that the air system, ABS system, and lighting systems all function correctly and have no leaks or short circuits. The trailer is then cycled numerous times to verify that all hydraulic functions operate correctly. All inspection information and serial numbers of critical components are documented on final inspection check sheets for verification and tracking purposes. After the trailer has been functionally tested and fully inspected, the trailer moves to the wood decking station to have the wood deck installed if so equipped. The wood is cut to the proper length and has ends treated to prevent splitting. 
The wood is then placed on the trailer and is drilled and screwed down onto the cross members at the appropriate spacing. After the deck is fully fastened down, a coat of wood preservative is applied to the entire deck. The Landall trailer is now finished and ready to go to work. It is ready for shipment to the customer where our trailers are featured in a variety of industries. They will be put to the test in the most extreme conditions. Our duty as a company extends well beyond the sale of the trailer. The Landall Parts Distribution Center is set up with over 30,000 parts and services Landall products in over 50 countries. We understand it's our duty to stand behind our Landall trailers before, during, and after the sale. Ultimately, Landall customer service and commitment to high quality products is what sets Landall apart from the competition. Landall really appreciates the relationships we have with our end users. Those relationships give us a chance to learn what's needed in the field, what operators are doing, how they're using our equipment, and with that knowledge we're able to improve our products. The new lighting system, the wiring harnesses, the features, those were all direct responses from our customers' needs and wants in the field. We're excited to bring them to the field, the market, and develop new product as we go forward. Operation of the trailer in a manner other than as specified by this program and the operator's manual could result in costly damage to the trailer, personal injury, or death. Drivers are strongly encouraged to follow all industry recommended procedures and safety practices during all phases of truck and trailer operation. Before hookup, it is important to do a complete walk around inspection of the trailer. Look for oil leaks and hanging wires or hoses. Check the tires for proper inflation and excessive wear. Check the oil in the hubs and look for structural damage to the trailer and gooseneck. After coupling, check the following. Hydraulic and air hose connections, air and ABS brake systems for proper operation. Check the running and signal lights along with the rear impact guard. Make sure the trailer's undercarriage is fully back in transport position. Inspect the winch and cable system to ensure safe operation. Also, make sure the landing gear are raised and secured in transport position. Operators will need to verify that the necessary straps, chains, and boomers to secure the load are on the truck or in the trailer's toolbox. Make sure the trailer suspension is fully aired up before operating the trailer on streets or highways. Safety is your first concern during all phases of trailer operation. Do not load any payload that will overload any component of the trailer or result in an unsafe condition. It is important that the truck and trailer are parked in a straight line on a solid level surface with the truck's parking brakes set and the trailer brakes released. If the winch cable is connected to the lower deck, activate the winch, reel out some slack cable, and unhook the cable. To put an empty trailer in load position, use the remote control or the axle control lever on the control panel to move the undercarriage forward five to eight feet or just behind the trailer's center of gravity. To ensure the trailer does not rock back, keep the undercarriage behind the trailer's center of gravity. Then raise the front of the trailer bed until the approach plate rests firmly on the ground. If the bed is fully raised but the approach plate does not contact the ground, move the axles forward until contact is made. Now alternate between moving the undercarriage forward and lowering the trailer bed. In load position, the undercarriage is forward as far as it will go and the approach plate is in contact with the ground. Always load at the lowest load angle possible. Now drive or winch the load onto the trailer. It is important that the load is positioned to the front of the trailer deck and centered side to side. If the load was driven on, 
Make sure the vehicle is in low gear and the parking brake is securely set before leaving the vehicle. As a safety measure, attach the winch cable and pull it snug against the load. Now secure the load to the trailer. Double check all chains and boomers to make sure everything is secure. At this point, it's time to put the loaded trailer into transport position. During this process, it is critical that you control the trailer's center of gravity. Warning! When a load is parked on both the upper and lower deck, adjustments to securing devices will be required as the trailer deck is moved into transport position. To put the loaded trailer into transport position, alternate between raising the trailer deck and moving the undercarriage towards the rear. As you raise the deck, the winch cable must be reeled out incrementally to prevent the load from being pulled forward as the bed is raised. Do not allow the approach plate to leave the ground when moving the axles towards the rear and do not let the rear axle leave the ground when raising the bed. Keep the weight of the load distributed between the approach plate, the axles, and the tractor's fifth wheel. Once the load center of gravity is in front of the trailer axles, you can slowly lower the trailer deck and reel in the winch cable. When the deck is fully lowered, pull the winch cable tight against the load and move the undercarriage all the way to the rear. Caution! When loading or unloading, do not run the truck engine above 1000 RPM. Higher RPMs can cause the hydraulic oil to overheat and could damage the truck and trailer's hydraulic system. To unload, position the tractor and trailer in a straight line on a solid level surface. Set the truck's parking brake and trailer brakes before exiting the cab. If your load is centered on the trailer deck, move it forward as far as practical. Reset the payload vehicle's parking brake, re-secure the load, and then release the trailer brakes. Activate the axle control lever on the control panel or the wireless remote and move the undercarriage forward 5 to 8 feet or just behind the loaded trailer's center of gravity. Caution! To ensure that the trailer does not rock back and raise the truck's rear axles off the ground, keep the undercarriage behind the loaded trailer's center of gravity. Now, slowly raise the trailer deck to full tilt position or until the approach plate rests firmly on the ground. Remember to incrementally reel out the winch cable as you raise the deck. Once the trailer is in full tilt position, the approach plate should contact the ground. If it does not, move the undercarriage forward just enough to initiate ground support for the approach plate. Again, alternate between lowering the trailer deck and moving the undercarriage forward. Keep the weight distributed between the approach plate, the undercarriage, and the fifth wheel. The trailer is in position to unload when the undercarriage is as far forward as it will go and the approach plate is resting on the ground. Before unloading, make sure the parking brake of the payload vehicle is set. Then remove the securing devices and unhook the winch cable. Now carefully back the vehicle off the trailer. When the payload is well clear of the trailer, return the trailer to transport position. Alternate between raising the trailer deck and moving the undercarriage towards the rear. Once the trailer's center of gravity is in front of the trailer axles, you can slowly lower the trailer deck and reel in the winch cable. When the deck is fully lowered, move the undercarriage all the way to the rear and pull the winch cable tight against the lower deck. If you dumped air from the trailer suspension to facilitate unloading, turn the dump valve off and air up the suspension before operating the trailer on streets or highways. When parking a trailer, make sure the undercarriage is not forward of transport position. To provide Department of Transportation approved underride protection, the undercarriage needs to be back as far as it will go with the undercarriage rollers fully seated in the roller pockets. Drivers, you are responsible for your safety and the safety of others when operating the trailer. As you go about your job, be aware of potential problems and do your best to avoid them. Always think safety.